Hey, hey folks, it's Calc here with a very special and exciting announcement. The Novation AFX station. Here it is. Now, the AFX station is a special one-of-a-kind collaboration between Novation and none other than electronic music heavyweight, absolute legend, Richard D. James, of course, also known as Aphex Twin. Now, the Aphex Twin has been one of the most important and influential electronic musicians easily in the past 30 years, and the AFX station is a total celebration of that. Essentially, the AFX station is a limited edition AFX approved redesign of the modern classic analog mono synth, the Bass Station 2. It has the same powerful feature set, but also comes pre-installed with the 4.14 firmware update, which obviously includes the AFX mode as well. Alongside that, we've added 128 brand new patches, and these have been designed by the likes of Richard Devine, Perplex On, uh, Noise Lab, R. Benny, and Lightbath. Alongside that, we've also added eight brand new overlays in there for you to use in the really powerful Aphex Twin collaborated AFX mode. The all new look features a paired back minimal black design with a purple reveal underneath and also purple LEDs added to both the mod wheel and the pitch bend wheel. On the back of the synth we have the famous Aphex Insignia which makes it an instant collector's item for anybody who is an uber Aphex twin fan. And on the top panel, you can see we've added some additional screen print alongside some extra Easter eggs. But these screen prints uh, basically call out some of the great features that have been added to the synthesizers engine over the time with, um, with the firmware updates that we've been including. So these include access to the overlays for AFX mode, access to filter tracking, turning on paraphonic mode, and all of these wonderful additional features that have been added to the engine. So the additional screen print really makes it a lot easier to access and, and navigate your way around the synthesizer. We've also been working with longtime Aphex collaborator Weirdcore. Weirdcore is Aphex Twins visual artist joining him on tour uh, and providing the visuals for all of his live sets and he's also worked with us to provide a fantastic piece of art in the gift box. The AFX Station gift box has a wonderful, beautiful AFX insignia design on the outside, but when you open it up, in the reveal you get a really beautiful image of an exploded AFX Station, again with the AFX treatment. It really is a fantastic piece of art. Now, in this video, we're going to delve a little deeper into some of the history of the base station and, of course, the AFX station. Talk a little bit about the connection with AFX Twin. Um, but initially, let's just take a quick listen to the sort of things that you can do with this synthesizer. So I've pre-recorded a little performance video. We'll take a listen to that and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more about the synthesizer.
So that was a quick look at the sorts of things you can do with the AFX station. Um, essentially, I was sequencing it from my uh, trusty Electron Machine drum here, which was also providing the drum parts, of course. Um, but I was making a lot of use of uh, some of the great features within the AFX station, such as the really powerful AFX mode. Now, a little bit later on, I'm going to talk a bit about some of the features that, and techniques that I was using on the synthesizer. But for now, let's just think about the base station itself the original base station, which was first designed in 1993. Um, this was a Chris Huggett synthesizer. Now, Chris Huggett is an absolute legend in the British synthesizer manufacturing world. He's pretty much made all of the Novation synthesizers, including the original base station, which was the second product ever made by Novation. And essentially, that became a bit of a classic in its own right. It was an affordable analog mono synth. And it's quite unusual because this was at a time when there were a lot of digital synthesizers. And we were pretty much on to getting into the cusp of people starting to use VSTs and plug in uh, synthesizers inside their computer software. So it really kind of bucked the trend. But one of the things that really cemented it into kind of synthesizer folklore was the fact it was an affordable analog mono that was getting used a lot in acid house music. Around about that time in 93 acid house was really coming to the fore and the Roland TB303 became synonymous with it but these were kind of becoming a bit more rare and the prices for those things were starting to shoot up so the base station the original base station became an affordable way to get that great analog kind of bass sound in your music. Now it was based around two uh, digitally controlled analog oscillators and then we had an analog filter afterwards but one of the really interesting things about the base station was the fact that it had MIDI and controllable parameters via MIDI as well. So this made it a sound design dream um, but also when you were recording in the studio you could really dial in and capture those tweaks to the sound as you're working so it made it a really important and useful tool for these guys. Then moving on into 1994, the base station rack appeared, and this featured the same kind of synthesizer architecture, but a syncable LFO was added, also an audio input, which allowed you to process any external audio you wanted through the fantastic sounding filters in the base station. In, in addition to this, you had CV and gate, input and output. Again, quite a rarity for those times. Um, CV and gate was becoming less and less kind of commonplace, but really useful for those guys who are really into their synthesizers, of course. 
Moving on into 1997, we get the Super Base Station. And this was the first time that we saw the third sub-oscillator appear in the base station. Alongside that, Chris Huggett designed a great ring modulator circuit and also a noise generator, and also added some analog distortion and a chorus at the end of the chain. So it made it a really powerful mono synth with a lot of sound sculpting capabilities. Then there was a bit of a hiatus and everything kind of moved into people using their computers and digital synthesizers sort of taking over really. But of course, in the early teens, 2010s, um, we started to see a huge analog renaissance and Novation came back with the Base Station 2, which has become a modern classic. It featured pretty much the same architecture that Chris had designed, um, but Chris also added some incredible new features as well. So in addition to the original synthesizer architecture, we now found that we had a second filter type that we could use, the acid filter. The acid filter is a 12 dB non-resonant filter, so you could get some really nice kind of squelchy sounds without pushing or overdriving uh, the resonance too much. In addition to that, more modulation was added. So we had oscillator filter modulation, which is basically FM of the filter using the second oscillator. It was a USB device as well, so you could both power it, but also connect directly into your computer to capture and record your MIDI and all your tweaking from a single cable. Really very useful indeed. And finally, an, a really powerful and useful arpeggiator was added alongside um, a programmable sequencer. So the Base Station 2 really kind of cemented itself into being an absolute modern classic, um, an analog synthesizer but built for the modern age. In fact, the digital control panel that you have on the Base Station 2 means that you can store and capture 128 patches into the instrument. Originally, the base station had seven patches. <laughs> so why the connection between Novation and Aphex Twin? Well, this story goes back quite a while now, and um, there was a day in customer support at Novation when one of our guys got an email from a Richard James asking if the base station 2 could support microtuning tables. Of course, it didn't take us too long to kind of work out who that was. And one of the geniuses in-house um, went away and actually developed a custom firmware that allowed Aphex Twin to do that. Now, microtunings is a feature on the Base Station 2, and of course, it's something that Aphex Twin is really quite famous for using. But that connection continued because Throughout the development of the Peak Synthesizer and the Summit Synthesizer, um, Richard James was collaborating with our guys and working on a microtuning sort of uh, a functionality uh, that is also existent in both Peak and the Summit Synth as well. Now, there was one day when he dropped us an email and said, um, I've got an idea for a synth. And at that point, when somebody of the stature of Aphex Twin says, I have an idea for a synth, of course we're going to listen. And um, that idea essentially became the AFX mode, which was added to the base station too. And of course, is a key feature here on the AFX station as well. So what is AFX mode? Well, it's a really clever and unique system that Richard James came up with. And it was essentially the idea to take each of the keys on the keyboard of the synthesizer, but allow the user to place their own sound um, on each individual key. So basically change the sound for each key on the keyboard. And this is a really quite a unique approach. And it takes what on the surface seems like quite a simple kind of mono synth instrument and really opens it and expands it out to allow you to use the, uh, use the synth like a drum machine, an analog drum machine, or, you know, just use it to tweak a certain patch in certain ways. It's a really powerful system. So how does it work? Well, now on the AFX station, of course, we've got this additional screen print. It's really easy to kind of navigate your way around. So if I press function and find the overlay option here, now in the AFX station, we have eight overlays and we've got, these are all populated when you get the, uh, get the instrument with uh, the new overlay sounds. And essentially what we can do is we can open up an overlay here. I've got an empty one. And basically when I play a sound, you can see there, 
we've just got a standard kind of uh, sawtooth sound. But if I press and hold the key and change maybe the filter, maybe a bit of distortion to that sound and maybe just make it a shorter sound. Okay, so we've got a, an individual sound there now. When I press the next key, we go back to that original sound. So let's add a bit of additional shaping to it. And again, we can carry on like this and change waveform. Um, let's bring in the second oscillator, retune that. So now we've got three different sounds on three different keys. So we can basically spend our time and create a whole bank of sounds just in a single kind of keyboard layout, which is a really powerful feature. Now, when I was doing the performance earlier, I was using uh, the AFX mode. Um, and basically I was sequencing the AFX station from my uh, uh, Electron Machine Drum over here. So I'll just play that part that I was uh, using. Just isolate it there. Now this is just using a standard uh, patch sound, but what I was able to do is turn on the overlay. So we've gone to, again, this empty overlay, and then I could start to make changes to the sound as the sequence was being run in. And you can see now, as the appropriate notes are played, we're changing the sound every time that note comes across. And this was a great way of kind of just using the instrument to build up a bit of tension throughout the performance. But if I wanted to revert back to where I was earlier, I could just simply reload in the patch and we'd go back to where we were. I also had another little preset going on. And this was using the micro tuning, so everything was slightly a bit kind of slightly wonky in terms of the tuning. But one of the things that I really enjoyed doing uh, working with this was actually turning on the arpeggiator and then basically letting the sequence go into the arpeggiator and adding a huge amount of variation to the sound by using this. And again, I moved into a, another um, preset that was using an overlay for this little pattern as well. So that's a quick look at kind of the AFX mode. Of course, there are tons and tons of features in the AFX station. Too many to go through here. Um, but there's lots and lots of videos on the base station engine, so you can learn about the AFX station by simply going to those videos and checking out the features that we have in the instrument. In conjunction with the release of the AFX station, we've also been working hard on Novation Components software. Now, Novation Components software is essentially the librarian and editing tool for your Novation device. And the Base Station 2 also has the connection to components. So here we are on the Base Station 2 page, and you can see here I've got my librarian, and this allows me to manage, um, save, uh, retrieve all of the preset sounds that I'm making. And I can create my own uh, library of sounds here very quickly using the librarian page and components. But we've been working very hard on the AFX mode and have brought a lot of new features here. So here we have our AFX mode and you can see again we've got a library of banks of overlays to work within the AFX mode. So I can just simply select them. So we'll choose this one here. And now if I turn on live edit, now it will send it automatically into the base station. And I can go ahead and create my overlay uh, for use in AFX mode. Let's just go back to an initial patch, turn Live Edit back on, and create a new bank. So let's create Overlay Bank, and now you can see we come from a new starting point. So if I turn Live Edit on, 
press a key, it's going to register here. And you'll notice on the right hand side, we now have a whole load of new controls which allow us access to some of the features that are hidden in a menu on the actual hardware. But this just gives us a much quicker and easier way of being able to edit and create our overlay sounds. So for example, here we're playing a C and we can just turn this into a fixed note. So this will always be a C. If I press a C sharp, I can also say, well, let's turn that into a C as a fixed note. And now, even though I'm playing a different note, it's still fixed to that same starting point. And this can be really useful when you're creating your overlays and just having the same basic starting point uh, for each of the sounds. So further down this list, you'll see that we've got some additional controls as well, which are really useful for the overlays when we're programming. And these are basically uh, features that are hidden away in a menu on, on the hardware itself. So for example, let's just turn up the sub oscillator. And now I have access to the coarse pitch of the sub oscillator. because of course oscillator 3 can be completely decoupled from the uh, oscillator 1, making it a truly independently tunable oscillator as well. The other things that we can do, for example, we can access the envelope retriggers. This is a particular favorite of mine. Um, and let's just bring down the decay and the sustain there um, off the note. And you can see now we have the envelope retriggering, which I can change the speed up by changing the position of the decay. And I can also give the retrigger a specific number of counts. So using the new component software in conjunction with creating your overlays is a great way of getting a lot more power and making it even easier to create some very musical and powerful overlays to use in AFX mode. So there we are, a good look at the Novation AFX station. This is a limited edition synthesizer, and if you're an Aphex Twin Uber fan, it's definitely a collector's item. But if you're just looking for something that is a really powerful, classic, analog mono synth, the AFX station is a superb instrument as well. For me personally, I've been a huge fan of Aphex Twin for the past 20 years or so, and it's an incredible honor that we've been able to work with him and actually bring this as a big celebration of his music to the world. So there we are, the Novation AFX Station. Thanks very much for watching.